on to phase one of today for the first hour we're going to talk about i'm going to give you like i said i'm not going to teach you how to collaborate with foreign teachers i'm going to suggest to you how to collaborate with foreign teachers because i don't know it all right and different foreign teachers have different personalities right so they are, we are all different from each other girls are different from boys girls some girls are outgoing some are calm girls some are very emotional some are just like they are stunted you know some boys are crazy some are quiet some are outspoken some are non-spoken at all so we are different from each other so i'm going to give you suggestion on how to meet foreigners and deal with them okay so okay. now this suggestions how you chinese teachers could work together with foreign teachers so my abbreviation here is going to be like the fts ft stand for foreign teachers okay and my lts is going to stand for so you see the lts and the fts so the local teachers to foreign teachers, how can they work together with each other to make teaching better for our kids? Because it's all about our children, right? No matter what we do, we make it, we try to work together to make the kids better, right? So now how can we do that? First and foremost, one, to me, my step one is understanding the intercultural awareness of the different people. What is intercultural awareness? Intercultural, inter, different cultures put together. This culture, this culture put together. If you understand this culture and you understand this culture and you put them together, then you are not gonna have problems to work with each other. But if you do not understand this culture, and in this culture, this is A is A, and in this culture, A is B, and you put together, it's not going to work. But if you know that A is A here, B, A is B here, and you know them, you're gonna know how to figure it out, to work with each other. So if you know Kathy, in my culture, oh, in Kathy's culture, you don't talk to Kathy and you look like this, like, uh, Kathy means da 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 yeah. If you know you don't do this in <laughs> Kathy's culture, and in your culture you talk like this, right? In your culture you talk like this, but when you see Kathy, what do you do? You look at Kathy and talk to Kathy, because you know my culture. You know when you talk to me, you look at me, right? And if I'm talking to a Chinese person or to another person that I know in your culture, I talk and look at this. I'm going to follow your culture. When I talk to you, I'm going to look like this and talk to you because I know your culture, right? You will say in Chinese, we're gonna meet people and you wanna say thank you, you're gonna, I see some people doing like this, CC, <laughs> right? But it's gonna be pretty difficult to you talk to America, you're like doing, thank you, thank you, thank you, right? But it's culture, we have to respect. <clears throat> respect each other's culture okay or respect them it's very important that's why it's part of their culture if we don't respect them we can never live together we can never work together so now we're going to bring out a little bit of this our these similarities and differences in these different cultures and how to bring them together to work with each other so now you can see from what I have written here, I said the most important aspect is to develop an intercultural awareness is for you to, awareness means to know, to know about these things, such as being cautious of the, the similarities, the same, the things that are the same, and the things that are different in these different cultures. And also understand the personal behavior of the different teachers you work with. Maybe today you have a foreign teacher who is very like Kathy. Oh, blah, 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 blah. oh yeah, let's play together, let's do this. Tomorrow you're going to have a foreign teacher who is just like, <laughs> okay, okay, what can I do? All right, there are two different people. You're not going to behave with that foreign teacher the same like you were behaving with Kathy. 
Maybe Kath will always drag, ah, let's go and play. Oh, let's go and eat. Maybe the other foreign teacher is very composed and very gentle, okay, or very ladylike. They are different people. You have to respect them and their personal attitude and behaviors, right? You don't have to push anyone, respect our boundaries and live with us differently, okay? If you have someone who is outgoing, fine. You can, and if you are outgoing, good pair, you can work together. You need someone who is quiet, you should know how to talk with a person with gentleness. And I know Chinese people are very gentle the way they speak. I think most foreigners are the crazy ones. We come and bring in a little bit of craziness, right? <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So, one, I said, what are these similarities and differences we are talking about? What are these similarities and differences? Now, I want to ask a question before I actually bring out what I know. What do you think is different, Chinese teachers and foreign teachers? What are the differences of Chinese teachers and foreign teachers? Before I tell you mine, what are the differences? What do you think are different, Chinese teachers, foreign teachers? Mm, the style of teaching. How is that? Okay, teaching style. style. Teaching style, good. How is it different? Uh, maybe. Uh, Chinese teacher is more um, prepared and uh, more typical, and the foreign teacher is more active and uh, full of passion. All right, that's a good one. Thank you very much. And number two, who knows? Any other one? Quiet teaching style. She just spoke about teaching style. What else? Don't brainstorm, you bring too much. Okay, like this girl, she just got me there, the first one. That was, I was about to talk about the teaching style, teaching method. She just brought out exactly what I wrote down. I like Chinese teachers tend to be more conventional, <coughs> right? Typical Chinese. They are very, very, in the teaching class, they are usually fully prepared. Chinese teachers, before they get into their class, they are so ready. She already did all her classes, prepare them in good style, you know, arrange them one step after the other. She wants to teach me go, number one, <laughs> then go to number two, number three, one step. She's very ready to do things step by step, one after the other. She doesn't go out of her teaching plan. She just stay there and walk on the teaching plan from beginning to the end. And they always make sure they give the kids homework. And a lot of homework for the kids to go home and keep them busy, you know, follow the same line and pattern when they go home. But, you see, but for the foreign teachers, they are usually good at, you know, making fun in the class. Yeah. They just talk with the kids, you know, getting the, the kids to be more creative in the class. I always ask you, why are you doing it? Why do you think is this? Why do you think is that? But that's not the same thing with the Chinese teachers, right? The, the, the foreign teachers think it's to make the kids get involved, understanding what you're teaching them. They stimulate the creativity of the children's brain. So it's not the same thing. The, Chinese, the foreign teachers are a little bit crazier in the classroom. That is why if you get in here, if you hear a class that is very noisy, wah, 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 oh, there's a foreign teacher there. Don't worry going elsewhere, you're going to see the foreign teachers in that class because it's always noisy. But if you go to a Chinese teacher's class, it's quiet. If you see them, they're like, no, no, no. If the teacher talks, whatever the teacher tells them to say, they say back and all that. But it's more, the foreign teacher's class is total chaos, different, totally different from the two teachers. So these are different people. When you are, as a foreign teacher, as a Chinese teacher, you want to work with your foreign teacher. Don't get, don't get surprised when you get into your foreign teacher's class. Kids are jumping from one angle to the other, and maybe the teacher is talking here and the kids are jumping there. It's okay. Don't get surprised about it. It's all right. With us, it's fine. It's okay. You, don't pu you push the kids, but not too hard to make them like, mm, you have to sit like this, or you have to sit like this, you have to do like this, and no, 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 it's okay, it doesn't matter. You can, don't think they are not listening, they are listening, okay? They can be playing, jumping, and moving around, but they are listening. They might not be listening 100%,
but 60, 70%, they are getting what you're saying. So don't be worried when you get into the classroom and you see that happening in foreign teacher's class. It's an okay situation. That's how the foreign teachers try to teach their kids. The second one I have is <coughs> evaluating students. How do the Chinese teachers evaluate foreign uh, students and how the, yeah. The Chinese teachers and foreign teachers are hold a very different standard. Chinese teachers more they care about the final test. Yes. Oh, if this child score is this, is great, okay, it should be better. They need to treat it. It's, it's a very important factor to evaluate the students. While, on the other hand, the foreign teachers are more involved with the general idea, the general progress of this child. It's not just about having, oh, 100%. No. It's okay to have 100% great, but if a child has 100% in writing and in spoken, the child is 20%, I'm going to take 20 plus 100 and put together and divide by 2, and I'm going to give you 60, right? Meaning you're good at writing, but you can't speak. And now, if you can speak, but you're understanding your knowledge about what you're talking about, it's very limited. I'm still going to evaluate you on that based on the way you reason and interact with the teacher. Some kids will be like, good morning teacher, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you? <laughs> That's all. That's the end of the day. Whatever the teacher say, you say back. Another kid will be like, Kathy, teacher, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And you, hmm, what are you wearing? The child is cute. Oh, Kathy, your hair. Is your hair real? The child is curious. You know, the child is very active in here, right? He wants to know more. He wants to learn more. He's very curious, wants to understand why it's like, why is your hair black and not, why is it black and red? It's supposed to be just black. Why is it black and red? That's a smart kid. But some kids are gonna be like, Kathy teacher's hair is different, and just stay there. You know, some are very curious to know more. So we are going to take all of that, your writing, your speaking, your interaction, the way you talk with each other and with the teacher, we consider all that together to evaluate the child. But why? The Chinese teaching method is about the... How much, how many, what's your percentage? 60, 80, 90, 100? That's what the parents see and that's what they, they talk about their children. So it's totally different evaluation, the way we do it with foreigners and Chinese teachers. Now, relationship with students. The Chinese teacher's relationship with the students, right? Uh, no, before I move to relationship, I want to talk about, let me go back to the, uh, the last one I was talking about. I want to say, when Chinese teacher, when you get into a foreign teacher's class or you're with a foreign teacher and a parent complain, oh, this child, it's not doing well. This child is not doing very good in the classroom. And you quickly go to the foreign teacher. Oh, the parents said that this child is not doing very well. It's okay. But maybe the foreign teacher doesn't hold the same opinion. If I have a very great kid in the class, uh, she talks very well. She interacts very well, right? With me, as a foreign teacher, she interacts very well with her friends. She's very well. She's great. Maybe she went to school and she had uh, 85, the final test, right? And the, the feedback is, oh, this child, the result is not very good. The fair parents are very angry. I don't think so. I think the kid is very, very good. I think that this kid is great. There are so many reasons a kid should not have 100% in the test. Maybe she got up on her left leg on that day and she's not happy. She will not have 100%. Maybe she wasn't just ready. She didn't prepare enough to go for that test. And that doesn't mean that kid is less than what she is. Okay, so we can look at things differently. And you might say, no, no, the kid is not good because the kid is 85% and not 100%. I don't think so. I think the kid is very good. Even though she had 85%. To me, I think she's the best. I don't hold the same. So when you talk about things like this with your foreign teacher, 
I need you to understand that foreign teacher's own way of thinking, evaluating that kid, and your own way of evaluating that kid. So when you want to communicate with your teacher, you know how to talk with your foreign teacher. That, oh, I, you better talk with suggestion. Hey, Kathy, let's say the kid's name is Mia. Hey, Kathy, this term, Mia scored 85% in, English, in the English test. So I think we should work on her writing. She's good at speaking. She's good at interaction. So we should, talk, we should work now on her writing because her writing is not at the top. That makes sense, right? The way you put it to the foreign teacher, it makes sense. But if you just come to me and tell me, oh, the parent said, this, this kid is not good, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to be like, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to be defensive. Do you know the meaning of defensive? Yeah. 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 I'm going to be defensive. I'm going to be no, stop. Mia is great. She's a great kid. I'm not going to think, I don't think so about Mia. I don't think she's bad. She's a good girl. She's a great kid. She's 100% of the top. But why you want to present it? Present it with an idea. Tell what do you think is the problem? The problem is her writing is facing problems. So we should work on Mia's writing. Oh, she told me we should work on Mia's writing. It's here. So whenever we are talk, we are writing in class, I'm going to pay attention to Mia because I know Mia has writing problem. You get me right? I know she's talk, she talks very well, so I'm going to pay attention to her writing problem. So you know how to bridge that and I'm going to talk with your foreign teachers on children's evaluation. Now, talking about relationships. It's okay, please. Okay. You got it, right? Yeah. If you don't get anything I say, please. Am I speaking fast? Mm -hmm. Am I too fast? No? Mm -hmm. Yes? It's okay? It's okay? <laughs> Good, because I can be very fast. So when I'm fast, please tell me to slow down. Say, Kathy, slow down. Yeah. I will slow down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, relationships with students. As for Chinese teachers, students respect them and see them, they see them as their models, you know, oh, this teacher is like this, this teacher is... so I should do like this, oh, this teacher dresses like this, this teacher always stands like this, this teacher always sit like this, so I should sit the same like my teacher. That's what they see. You are like moral models to these kids. You teach them your manners. Whatever you do is what the students turn to do. If the teacher is quiet and very you know, ladylike, very composed. That's what the kids are going to be. That's what they see in you. They admire you as their role models. That's what you are to them. But on the contrary, let's look at what the, the foreign teachers, they come, uh, they, uh, I talk about when it comes to the foreign teachers, they show equality to them. The foreign teachers, the foreign teachers go down to the level of the children. You know, we want to be the same with the children. So if the kids are jumping, we are also jumping with them. If the kids are running, we run with them. If they are sitting on the floor, we sit on the floor with the kids, right? If they are rolling, we roll with them. We try to make ourselves the same level with the kids. So these are two different things all together. So when you see your foreign teacher going crazy in the classroom, maybe playing with the kids, running around the classroom, it's okay. That's what foreign teachers do. I guess some of your foreign teachers do the same, right? Right? When you were younger, did you have foreign teachers when you were younger? No. Oh, okay. Oh, this is a new generation situation. So, but at least in the colleges, right, at the university level, yeah. it's almost the same, right? Yes. Your Chinese yeah. teachers just follow the book, right? Yeah. They just sit maybe in your, the chair and just, or maybe stand and do their talking, talking, a very, very traditional fashion way, why the foreign teachers would be like, hey, guy, hey, and you guys are talking, and sometimes you move to the restaurant, right? You go with your foreign teachers to the restaurant and have meals together. You invite them over to your home, or the foreign teacher invite you over to his or her home, and you people chat. You chat with your teacher. You play with, you go badminton, play with your teacher. You go sightseeing with your teacher just for fun. It's totally different. So the, the, the Chinese kids and foreign teachers are like 
the same level while the Chinese teachers and the kids are this level. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. The teachers are here, the students are here. Foreign teacher is here, the students yeah. are here. So we have to understand that it's totally different to evaluate kids based on how you, the interaction with the foreign teacher and the interaction with the Chinese teacher. You might say, oh, this kid is very naughty, a very disrespectful kid. But I could see that kid and say, oh, he's a very, very self-innovative kid. The child wants to do things for himself. He wants to think by himself. He wants to make things for himself. They don't, kids do not listen to their teacher. Those are kids who want to do it by themselves. So you help them to do it by themselves. You don't tell them what to do. That's what we the foreign teacher. We think children are very smart. We just need to bring out the best in each of these children and let them grow with these different gifts, different abilities they have. But the Chinese teacher will just tell them what she is teaching and expect the kids to do the same thing and reproduce the same thing. So the understanding and the relationship is totally different, the way you see it. Okay, so I just want to say, that's my own show of what <coughs> the relationship between Chinese, teacher, Chinese students and foreign teachers is like and how the Chinese students and Chinese teachers is like. Now, if we see these different things together, I believe we can understand how to go about. Now, I try to bring out a little bit on how to go about talking with now you, your relationship with foreign teacher, Chinese teacher. How to go about chatting with your foreign teachers. For example, let me give an a scenario. Let me see who is going to be answer that question. Um, for example, you are made my assistant teacher, right? You are made my assistant teacher. And I am teaching in the classroom. And one kid is jumping. You have 10 kids in the classroom, right? And one kid is jumping in the classroom, one angle to the other, jumping, jumping. What will you do? Remember, you're not a Chinese teacher. You are now an assistant teacher to a foreign teacher. And that classroom is an English classroom, which means we are teaching the children English culture. And we allow the children to express themselves in an English manner. Okay? So, what will you do to the situation where you have 10 kids and one kid is moving all around the classroom? What are you going to do to salvage the situation? Communicate with him. Communicate how? Maybe um, play a game with him. Play a game with the kids. You have nine kids in front of the, you, mm -hmm. and the teacher is teaching, and you're behind the class playing game <laughs> with one kid. Is that possible? No. Mm -hmm. So what do you think you can do? Um, try to tell, tell him if uh, he will be uh, calm down. I will give him one star. Oh, one star. Yes. Wow, you got the one star thing. That's okay. That's a good one. And if the kid doesn't, go with your one star. Okay. <laughs> if the kid doesn't go with one star, what hap what, what will happen? Uh, together, together jump. Together jump. I like that one. I like that one. Because if in a situation where you've been teaching the kids and one kid is just jumping all around the class and maybe you think it's too much, you can't handle, then let's play a game and jump along with the other yeah. one kid, right? But it's a good thing to jump around with the others. But what about the nine students who are want, who want to listen to the teacher and learn? <laughs> Very good. So they are going to jump around when they are tired, then you start your class. And you have one hour. <laughs> you have just one hour to teach the kids. 
and you have to jump around here when you're tired. Then you start teaching them. At that time, you're going to be like, because <laughs> they are tired, they want to go home. Yeah. Right? So, what are we going to do in that situation? Okay, now, for me, I think in a situation like that, you just tell the kid the nice things that a kid wants to hear. You bring the kid closer to you as the, chi as a foreign, as a Chinese teacher, make the kid feel better. Tell him the nice thing. Oh, wow, you're great. Sit down with me. Let's do something else. I'm going to help you. I tell you the answers. Everything the teacher says, I'm going to tell the answers. Maybe the teacher asks a question. You're going to whisper the answer to the child, and the child's going to answer. And the child's going to say, Yay, you are great. The kid's going to feel better. They're going to be, Wow. I was playing, but I was playing, but now I did the answering of the question, which means I'm the most intelligent in this class. I'm better than all of you sitting down. <laughs> so make the kid feel better than every other one in the class. You're gonna be like, wow, me sitting, and the foreign teacher is gonna understand what you're doing, and gonna be like, wow, you're wonderful. Please clap for him. And the kid's gonna be like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow, I'm the best in this class right now. So now, why did I give this example? I was trying to ask, want you to relate your communication with the foreign teacher. Speechless communication. Speechless, I meaning the teacher didn't tell you what to do. But you know what to do by bringing the child back into the learning process. You understand? You have used your own personal ideas to bring the child back into the classroom and now the child is participating in the class by your own self ability and the teacher is going to understand because he sees what you're doing and for that child to answer it's just like oh everyone clap for me the teacher knows the kid have been crazy the teacher knows that you brought in the child and doing that he's appreciating what you have done by bringing the child back and now making the entire class to be more competitive and encouraging. So that would be a good job done by the foreign, by the assistant teacher, by the Chinese teacher, and the the foreign teachers appreciating what you have done. That's a means of communicating with your teacher in the class without you saying anything. Okay, the teacher doesn't. Hey, hey, Emma, please take care of that child. No, I don't need to take that. I don't need to do that, right? That is you understanding me that, oh, this child is not, I need to help to make this child go back and listen to Kathy. And you do that, and Kathy is very happy by awarding gratitude to you to the, through the child. So that is a way of getting to talk to your teacher. Now, talking about understanding teachers in their different ways, let's talk about personal relationship with your foreign teacher. How do you get to be with your foreign teacher? If you are my assistant teacher, how do you get to be with me? How do you get to talk to me? How do you get to know me? Mm -hmm. Because you need to know your foreign teacher yes. to be able to work very well with your foreign teacher. And your foreign teacher needs to know you as a person. Understand Kathy as a person. Don't understand Kathy as just a foreigner as a person and I need to understand Bella as a person and I'm going to work with Bella. So how can we know each other? What are the different ways we can get to know each other to be able to work together peacefully? Any suggestion? One, talk more. Just talk. For us to know her culture. Yes. Her own culture. No. By talking, you get to know her culture. You can't know her culture if you don't talk to her. Mm -hmm. Right? You yeah. need to talk to Kathy. Mm -hmm. Anything. It doesn't matter. Kathy, what did you have for lunch? It's all right. I had bread. I had this. I had that. Just get, oh, Kathy usually have, she usually takes bread for lunch. She usually eats bread for lunch. Oh, wow. Now you're getting to know Kathy's favorite food right just by asking constantly oh Kathy what do you usually do during your spare time do you like badminton I like badminton do you want to come with us 
Play with your foreign teacher. Go with her to places. You like shopping. Kathy, I like yeah. going shopping tomorrow or next yeah. tomorrow. Would you want to come? I will, sh I will show you nice places and cheaper places to shop. Everyone likes, loves to buy cheap things, right? Right? Yeah. You love going to markets where things are cheap. And you, for uh, the, the Chinese teachers, know these cheap places to buy things. Kathy, let's go. I know places where you could buy your shoes very cheap. Oh, oh, I usually buy my shoes in the supermarket for 1,000 kwai, for 800 kwai. Oh, I know a place you can buy for just 200 kwai. Really? <laughs> I want to go with you. <laughs> now, just by walking and moving with Kathy, going shopping with Kathy. What kind of voyage? You don't just go. You talk, right? Yeah. You talk. You are improving your English while talking with Kathy. You get to know Kathy's culture more while talking to Kathy. You get to know her personality while coming. And she gets to know you. So you try to be as best of friends that you can. The best way you can try to make friends with each other. For not just for your job, but for yourself, feeling comfortable being with your foreign teacher. Because just like uh, Sophie said, oh, Kathy, you standing there. I'm very nervous. <laughs> Good, right? But if I am here for two days, she's not gonna be nervous anymore because she's already close to Kathy. Now we're gonna eat, to, we're gonna have dinner together, we're gonna sleep together, we're gonna play mahjong together, right? And in the morning we're gonna do this together, we're gonna do that together. So that's it, you're now familiar with each other, you get to do things together, you understand. And that's it, you're bridging that gap. So even when you have problems in the classroom with your, with your teacher, you know, oh, Kathy doesn't like me to talk very seriously on her. I need to calm down and ease it and talk nicely to Kathy. And she will understand. But you're like, Kathy, I think the class today wasn't very good. You did this, you did this, you did this, but not very good. And I don't think the parents are going to appreciate it. And we're like, what do you mean? I didn't do anything like that. And I'm going to be like, no, I'm like doing the serious thing. I'm like, Kathy, I saw you today doing this in the classroom. That wasn't very good, you know. If the parents get to know, they're going to be angry. Really? Oh my God. Wow. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to do it anymore. So it depends the way you talk with each other. Some people like it straight. Some people like it in a kind of way. Just know how you bridge this gap to talk with a person. If you talk in a nice way, the way the person appreciated. Oh, yes. Yeah. So simple. I'm going to accept that. I'll never do that again. Right? But if you skip, what? What do you mean? Do you mean I'm this? I'm a bad teacher? And start doing the thing like, oh no. People don't want to accept things like that. So you know how to bridge those gaps. And another part of communication is movement of. Things. For example, you're my friend, you're, you're my assistant teacher in the classroom, and we teach together, right? And uh, K is the manager. manager. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and uh, Kevin is the <laughs> no, don't go back. The middle manager. He's the middle manager. <laughs> yeah, he's the middle manager, and. Uh, then we have the senior manager, right? Yeah. So we have the we have the low level managers, middle managers, and the high level, the top managers, right? So now let me play a game and say something, and I want us to whisper. We're gonna whisper this thing, and Kay is going to tell me what I said to her. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I just want to relate the meaning of communication, how it moves around. So I'm gonna say something to you. And um, you're going to tell her, and you're going to tell her, don't worry if you didn't hear it clearly, it doesn't matter. Just imagine and keep going with the communication. You don't have to get it right. So I'm going to tell you something, and you tell her, and we move right. And the kid is going to tell me, got it right? I'm going to say it once. And the intention is for you not to even get it. Okay? So don't worry about getting it or not. Okay? <laughs> Let's begin. <laughs> yeah, 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 I like that. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a sentence, okay?
Communication. Mm. I said angry and you said hungry. Mm. Right? <laughs> and I said at Kathy, you guys said at Kevin. <laughs> right? So it's very important when you communicate. For example, you're in the classroom with your foreign teacher, right? And there was a problem in the classroom. You should not go and tell the middle man, the low manager first. The first person you go is like, you're there, a good Chinese traditional teacher. Oh, the foreign teacher did this in the class. She did that, she did that. Oh, this wasn't good, this wasn't good. No. You can deal with the problem first with your teacher. Communicate with your foreign teacher first. Handle the problem with Kathy. Kathy, you made me angry today. Because this, 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 that. I don't like you doing this, 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 that. Because it makes me angry, right? But if you go and tell uh, K, K will go and tell Kevin that you said you were hungry. <laughs> and Kevin is going to tell Vera that uh, Emma said she is angry at Kevin. <laughs> From the number, what's in the classroom to something else? So, if you can deal with the problem that is this small, little problem in the classroom, first fix it with your teacher. Have talk with your assistant teacher. Deal with the problem. If you guys cannot handle the problem, then we can now move to the. To the manager, we have this situation. How can you help us to suggest work? With the, how can we deal with this problem? Then it now starts moving from one to from the low manager to the upper management because this is a problem we cannot handle and we are going to present a situation. Although not all the situation, <laughs> but what I'm saying here is if every day you're with your foreign teacher in the classroom, he does this, you talk. He does this, you talk. One, it's not good. It means that you are not the assistant teacher. You're not, what's the meaning of assisting? Helping. Together, we're working together to help each other to do something better. But if you're not helping me and you only go to say, it's not going to help. And maybe the way you see the problem is not the way I see the problem. And when you say the problem to your manager, it's not the way I will say the problem to the, my manager. So first, let's see the problem as one before we go to the manager. That's what makes the classroom a better place. That's you trying to deal with your assistant, with your foreign teacher together. Imagine I just sit one day and my big manager is calling me. Kathy, I heard you got, you made Emma Emma angry today. And Kathy doesn't know Emma is angry. I don't know you are angry, but our dad, our Lord, just called me and told me Emma is angry. How did that happen? When was that? She's Today, you made her angry. Today, I was Emma. Emma was smiling in the classroom. <laughs> and we left the school. Emma said, good night, Kathy. See you tomorrow. <laughs> With a smiling face. But I just had a call. Emma is angry. That's impossible. I'm going to say, no, Emma is fine. She's fine. We are fine. We don't have a problem. No, you did this. You did this. You did that. 
Trust me, I am not going to tell you I'm sorry. Do you know why? Why, why do you think I'm not going to tell you I'm sorry? <laughs> One, I don't know why you are angry. And the worst is that you didn't tell me you were angry. How would I know you were angry? I need to know these things. Because if you breach this gap, oh, Kathy is an, a foreigner. I am only going to talk about my feelings, my problems to my Chinese manager. Then you can never work together in peace. You need to be able to, I need to be able to know that if I do this, Emma is going to be angry. If I do this, Emma is going to be happy. If I don't know that, then I'm always going to hurt you without knowing I hurt you. And it's going to be difficult for me to accept I've done something wrong. If it's not coming from you, it's coming from the manager. I'm always going to fight back. And we're always going to be having problems. And very soon it's going to be like, oh, girl, one girl out here. I don't like this teacher because this teacher is that we can fix little problems in the classroom, okay? Just by talking with each other, we can deal with that. Another one is, now, another one is, most often, Chinese teachers help their foreign teachers to go around the city, especially when they just come from the States, the land into China. You help them to settle down. You help them to look for their accommodation. We have them to so go to the markets and blah blah blah, do this, do that, do that right. Now, this helps you to know the different culture and know these people more about themselves and know how they can react to what different things. If then you go to maybe you go to a very expensive mm -hmm. restaurant and the teacher like, this restaurant is very expensive. I don't want to go there. Oh, you know, Kathy cannot afford that restaurant. Next time you take me to a more cheaper mm -hmm restaurant right so this is how we do these things to communicate with each other always you should be concerned about our well-being if you are sick i take the class without you right and i'm concerned oh emma are you okay have you taken medicine have you gone to the hospital the same thing if kathy is sick you should have love and concern for, to each other and by that doing you make me to know that you care, care about you, yes. and I should also care about you. You make me to belong. I have that feeling of belonging. I'm part of you. You are part of me. You're going to love your classroom. Your classroom is just going to be like mom, dad, children. If you guys are fun, if you guys are really into each other. But if you're not into each other, sorry, it's going to be like, Whatever the teacher does, you're only just like marking it. Oh, what time is the class going to be over? Oh, I just want to leave. You don't like being at the side of Kathy. You just hate being around her. So another one, please don't worry about your English. Okay? Forget about, stop thinking too much about your English. You're going to improve with time. Give it time. You cannot learn a language for one day, one year. We learn every day. Okay? That's why there is something they call dictionary. You know, dictionary, right? Yeah. I use the dictionary. I speak English, right? But I use the dictionary all the time. Why do I use the dictionary? Because I need to learn every day. I speak English, but I learn English every day. So it's okay for you to have lack of confidence to stand up to your foreign teacher to be talking to each other. It's all right. It's not a problem. If you're thinking too much about your language, then you will not be able to communicate with your teacher. Just calm down. Look for the simple words possible. We are going to understand each other. Of course, we've been talking today, right? And I understand you without any problem. So the same thing, when you talk with your foreign teacher, you're going to be having the same situation with them. Okay? So don't worry. Don't think too much about your language, and it's going to be fine. Just use your own little words and express yourself, and everything's gonna be all right. Now, mm, encouragement, like to encourage each other from the things we do. Now, how can you encourage your foreign teacher to be closer to you? Because it's not just you being close to your foreign teacher. How can your foreign teacher be close to you? So now I want you to give me suggestion on how us, foreign teacher, can be closer to you. Chinese teachers.
together and you talk together give me suggestions on how I can foreign teachers can be close to Chinese teachers <laughs> what a suggestion okay go shopping together yeah watch a movie or okay do something Together. together. So it's always together. <laughs> so the final analysis is always together. Right? Okay, what if, uh, what if, what if Kathy doesn't want to be with you all the time? For example, I have my boyfriend, right? I, mean, I want to go with my boyfriend. I don't want to go with you. So, how can you, do? how are you going to deal with the situation? How are you? Okay, messages, all right? And because I have a boyfriend and I'm not going to be going out with you all the time, I will be with my boyfriend, of course. <laughs> On computer. Using what medium? Using what? QQ? Maybe I don't use QQ, what are we going to do? <laughs> Facebook. Facebook in China? Huh? Video chat. Like to video chat, like face, face chatting, right? Yes. Face to face? When you do some half away. And her, and her and me and my Great, I like that. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, so we can do double dating. Yeah. Double dating, okay? We can double date sometimes, right? Very good one. That's what I was expecting you guys to say. That's why I brought in the word boyfriend. Now, you can bring something similar. Oh, Kathy has a boyfriend. She's going out with her boyfriend. Let's double date. Kathy, you're going out to your boyfriend. boyfriend today? So maybe I could go with my boyfriend. Where are we going? Yeah. That's going to be fun because we're going to feel easy. Like, boys are going to be cha 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 talking about football. They're going to be talking about blah, blah, blah. And we girls are going to be like, oh, Jackie, show me how You know? Girls, we have our things we talk about, and boys have their things to talk about, right? So if we do that, we're going to help to make it easier. My boyfriend and your boyfriend are going to be friends, right? And you are making friends. We are making it bigger and bigger. That's how it is. It's very nice that way, right? So now, if Kathy likes to go to the movies, and maybe you don't like the movies sometimes, you could just sacrifice. For friendship, we sacrifice all the time. Mm -hmm. Your boyfriend likes to watch football. You don't like to watch football, right? Mm -hmm. But you accompany him to the football match, yeah. right? He's there like, yeah, 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 you're like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it, but you love him. You want to be there. It's the same thing. It's part of the sacrifice. Maybe Kathy likes to go, whatever, bungee jumping or what. Mm -hmm. You just go along. You don't like it, but you just move along to it and just to get the company to go along with it. It's very, very nice and it's very helpful for the relationship to grow, right? <coughs> and also, some people really like to stay a distance, like, oh, I just, <coughs> foreign teacher want to be this way and Chinese teacher want to be this way. If you have that kind of foreign teacher, it's okay. Build your professional relationship and let go of your personal relationship, okay? Build a nice professional relationship just at school. Kathy, what are you going to be having for lunch? Oh, I'm going for lunch. Kathy, hey, I got you this apple. She's going to do the same thing for you. Because if you show the same hand, Kathy's going to show the same hand. Right? But if you just don't show concern, she's not going to show concern to you because she knows that we are all individuals in this class and we just do things differently. So that's how it's going to be. So now, um, we're going to try to talk about developing respect. Respect. To respect me, I respect you. It's everything. 
And foreigners love what they call privacy. Privacy. What's the meaning? Who knows? Like, for example, for example, if I, I do not want to, for example, I say some. <laughs> okay, okay. You got it? Yeah. Okay, can you tell the others? What's the meaning of privacy? <laughs> okay. Like, if you have an issue with me, talk to me. Don't tell people. Because if I know these are the things you say about me, my back, I'm going to be very pissed. <laughs> like really, really angry at you, okay? If I know you're my assistant teacher, I know you're my friend, right? There are, I might just be so comfortable with you and I tell you so many things, right? Now you're my friend and you're my assistant teacher. You should know how to bridge the gap of friend, teacher. I am not gonna tell you that, oh, mm, tell you something very, like, what can I say? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm good at private one. What's privacy? Maybe I tell you that, oh, I like going to the nightclub and get drunk. For example, right? You've never seen me drunk. Have you ever seen me drunk? No. no. Nobody has ever seen me drunk. At my job, no one has ever seen me drunk. And maybe I, I take you, uh, we go to the nightclub and we get drunk, right? And Kathy was so drunk. Like, and I come home. And you go and tell everyone, Kathy <laughs> was very drunk today. What? Kathy's dry. Tell everyone. And everyone's going to be like, I'm just going to hear from someone. Look at our shit. Always drunk. <laughs> you get my point, right? If I know that, hmm, how did they know I was drunk? I went out with Emma. I went drinking with Emma and I was drunk. You told them I was drunk. I'm going to be very angry. I might not tell you, I just, what foreigners are going to do that? They're not going to tell you that I'm angry. What you're going to do is like, I'm not going to, I don't want to go out with you anymore. Yeah. Right? I'm going to start sticking to myself because I see that you are hurting me. And in Chinese culture, it's okay. Wow, yesterday when I were drunk, everyone knows it's okay, right? Foreigners don't like that. We love to keep our things to ourselves. That's why we call, we have something we call BFF. Do you know what's BFF? Best friends forever. Best friends forever. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. If you're my best friend, I tell you my things because mm -hmm. you're my best friend. Tina is not my friend. If I tell you, Emma, my things, I didn't tell you to go and tell Tina. <laughs> you get me, right? Yeah. I tell you, Emma, I, didn't, I don't want Sophie to know. I don't want Alice or Helen or Vivian to know. No, I don't want them to know. But I want you. Emma to know because you are my That's friend. Fair. If I get to hear that Helen said Kathy and Emma I'm angry. Very very angry. Because it's just you and me. We are very protective when it comes to relationship and information. You are my friend. You. Not her. <laughs> Maybe she's your friend but I don't like her. It's okay, she's your friend, but I don't like her. So you are my friend, but she's not my friend. It's okay, right? But maybe in the Chinese culture, teachers, everything goes around, right? Everyone tells everyone everything, but it's not the same with the foreigners. So be careful when you're with your foreign teachers, don't just go saying things they tell you in private to every person, because when they get to know about it, they get to be angry about it, like really, really <coughs> angry, like really <coughs> angry about it. But in the Chinese culture, it's okay. And also, personal stuff, don't just ask anything, like talking with, you just meet. I'm very happy today. For the first time, I stand in front of Chinese crowd, and no one said, how old are you? No one asked that question to me. That was good. That's a good uh, congratulation. And no one asked, do you have a boyfriend? Okay, are you married? Do you have children? I'm very happy. You guys, no one asked that question, but I was expecting. I knew you were going to ask that question because that's a normal question. Chinese people just see you on the road like, 
You're moving on the street, foreigner, and someone like. <laughs> this one, they like, they like, you don't know. Right? And I'm like, excuse me. You didn't even say hello. And you're just like, how old are you? I'm not even going to look at you. I'm just going to be like, that's when I'm like, Ting Putong. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand what you're talking about, right? You don't know me. I'm just like, how old are you? What does that, does that make sense? It doesn't, right? You get to know people and try to get a relationship with them before you get into your personal life. I know. Oh, do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, it's a normal question for me. I moved on the street. Someone like, do you have a boyfriend? It's normal. Are you married? It's a normal. Do you have children? No more question. Mm -hmm. But these are things, before you approach your foreign teachers, you don't go asking those things like that. Bam. No. It's, those are things you talk to people who are your friends. You get to know them, okay? Know them first, then you start going into, how old are you? Oh, why do you leave your family to come stay here in China? Don't you miss your family? You get personal when you know them, right? know them very well then you get personal to them you don't just go asking very very personal question like are you married do you have children and things stuff about your family and all that you don't just go asking them that they kind of feel like she's too too curious you i don't want to please step back don't be too inquisitive about my life because i'm not going to ask you that I might in the future, but not like I just get to know, oh, wow, do you have a boyfriend? What's your boyfriend's name? How old is he? And the, there's a nice question the Chinese kids always ask the teacher. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I do. Is he handsome? Oh, my God. Really? How can you ask me that? So, please don't ask your foreign teacher this very personal question. Sometimes they feel very awkward about it, and it's kind of difficult for them to get to know each other, to talk to you about it. So, now I'm going to end today's talking. We've been talking for one hour. Yeah? So, I'm going to take a break.